So as you can tell by the color of my shirt, it's tomorrow, yesterday, or whenever you're seeing this. So uh, we're going to pop this out of the clamps and we're going to get the back braces on. But first we actually have to set, uh, shape the, the center strip because, well, otherwise it's ugly. So to do that, I just take the wedges and gently take it mostly out but not fully. So that way it doesn't go flying. So now we're left with the center strip that we put in. We're going to take our scraper. This one I've ground the, the side of it so I've got a smaller workspace or a working edge. And I'll just give it a quick scrape this way. I don't have to go completely neurotic. I just want to get the excess glue off of the sides where it's visible because everything on here is going to be going away. Uh, that's all we need. Now, I've got this uh, little squirrel tail plane, and uh, I used to use one of the, the green ones. Uh, this is a, a Lee Nielsen. And I've modified it by chamfering the corners of this very heavily. Uh, actually, just about up to the blade. So that way, when I round this over, uh, I can start right here at the edge with that at a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to round this over by taking away this edge here, here, and here, and then basically pulling the arch down towards the center. Um, we'll speed this up for you. So now, oops, now that I've got this pulled down to a 45 degree angle to both sides, I'm going to start pulling it towards the center by rounding over as I go. That's about halfway pulled over. And on this one, I'll start from the center and kind of work it back down this way, and then I'll look at it and adjust as needed. Now, I like to personally aim for a, a height of about two millimeters, but again, this is not critical. This is just a reinforcement for the center seam of the back. So if, you've, if you're doing a three-piece back, obviously you're going to have to do this twice over. Uh, it doesn't take long. And there we go. That's the arch of that rounded over. Uh, I'm going to take some 120 grit sandpaper and just sand, believe it or not, cross grain on this, or in line with the long grain of the back, to get this nice and smoothed out. And then I'm going to put a little bevel on there, so let me grab sandpaper. So, I got the sandpaper from over there, and the chisel from over there. We'll put that into the tool lineup for what we need. So, I just like to fold it, give myself a good crisp edge, and using three fingers, Just a quick sand. We're not going for anything crazy here. And if this paper gets dead, obviously turn it because paper's cheap, time is expensive. So that's all you have to do. It's really quick and easy. And at, after that, I'm just going to take my chisel. Uh, this is just a simple three-quarter inch Lee Nielsen chisel, but any chisel works. Uh, you know, it's a great indulgence to have a Lee Nielsen tool, but if you can only afford uh, something you find at a garage sale, that's great, because they'll still work. So, here I'm going to put my hand flat against this, making an L. See how my hand has an L? And if you're left-handed, obviously this is going to be reversed. But, I'm going to use my thumb as a lever point, and... I'm going to lock this arm in place. I'm not going to be pushing this way. I'm going to be rotating my body with my thumb as a fulcrum. That way, my chisel isn't going into my hand because that's how cuts happen. So, uh, Just real clean and simple, and that's all we have to do to put a nice bevel right here at the edge. 
after that, I'm going to take my grandfather's square and I'm going to take one of my braces and this one I am looking to go since this is the lower side, uh, the lower bout. I want to take this mark and I've decided that this side is going to be my mark if you remember the X from the earlier in the video. Uh, I'm going to take this, I'm going to hold my brace square to the center line at the widest point of the lower bout. The three positions of the braces will be at the widest point of the lower bout, the widest point of the upper bout, and then very precisely just slightly lower than the waist of the guitar. And it really doesn't matter. Uh, I've built guitars with just two braces and they work great, it sounds great, I've never heard a difference. Uh, you just want really something to help hold the arch for the back and that's what the braces are doing. Therefore, by holding the arch in the back, you're going to be able to get a better reflection of sound. So, with this brace held into place here, I'm going to move those out of the way so they're not there, I'm just going to take my little razor saw, it's a very fine micro-bladed saw, and I'm going to hold it right up flat against there, and just cut very gently down through the back brace. And uh, it's at this point in time when I always realize I want to get a nice surface onto both sides of these, uh, so, uh, and I forgot to do that. So, uh, I'm going to take my trusty block plane and uh, make sure it cuts. I'm going to do one, two passes on this side just to remove the sanding marks and then uh, flipping it end for end because we want to obey the grain direction. One, two, on the other side. And I'm done. That's, that's all I need to do. So, now, with that cleaned up, and this is now a final surface. I'm uh, I'm not going to touch this anymore because I love, I don't know if you can see that, but there's uh, a little bit of a curl, which is in keeping with the appearance of the rest of the guitar. So uh, this is a uh, nice piece of Spanish cedar I've pulled aside because it's got this quilt in it. So I'm going to take this and just slide it this way in the direction of my knife cut about the thickness of the saw. So about like that. It's very little. And I'm going to very carefully just put a little score right there so you can see if I take this away there's the saw cut and then there's the score. And then again using the square and the razor saw I'm going to slide this up to here making sure that the kerf of the blade on this side is resting on the outside edge of the score. And I'll do it just by placing the blade up against the square, sliding it up, and cutting very gently right through. Now I need my dog leg chisel, which I still forgot. Now, here's a dog leg chisel. Uh, it's called a dog leg because it, well, it's either this or an offset chisel. Uh, it's a quarter of an inch wide, so it's a very, very small chisel. Um, amazingly useful, only for this task, I love it. So I'm just going to get in here, and again, hands here, so that way you're not, um, I guess this would be the emergency room position. We're going to keep our hands parallel to the line of travel. So I'm going to take one cut off that way, one cut this way, and then up the middle, and then repeat until you are completely through. On both sides. And now, for the moment of truth, I'm going to take that brace, I'm just going to visually center it up. And it should go in nice and snug. And then we're going to do it for the other two. Uh, so after this, I'll show you how to shape the, the, the tops of this and as well as the ends.
Uh, now that these three have been fit and this one's been set in, uh, we're going to glue these all together. So again, a lot of guitar makers talk about their go bars and they love their go bar system because they can put it into a contraption and, and use a bar to hold it into place. That's fine, but I got a lot of stuff going around, going on around here, and I got to be able to move my work. So, instead of that, we're going to say hello to a similar friend. Uh, you remember from earlier, we used this one to clamp the center strip in. This one, uh, it's marked here with the X. And if you remember, on our braces, we have the marked ends. So I'm going to put all of the X's on this side. All of these ends are going to be on the, this side as well. Theoretically, these are the same left to right, but I'm human, that's wood, and we're all fallible. So, I have more than one of these. In fact, I've got two more. And uh, this is where it kind of gets a little bit difficult. Is you have to set the braces more or less into place, and then get this all into this contraption. So, uh, yeah, I haven't found a good way. If you guys can figure out a good way to do this, I'd love to know. Uh, I'll start from here, so that way this one's mostly in place. And then I'm gonna go second one up, and then the third one. So that way, when I put this together, I'm going to check my ends, I'm going to place it on, you know, obviously this doesn't have glue on it, but then I'm going to pick this up and place it down. And I'm going to do that for all three. So, uh, without further ado, let's glue. Now, it's been just a few moments, and I can take this and move it to wherever I need it to be, so that way I'm not occupying my shop with this. I can take this, put it off to the side, let it dry. And so, you know, in a few moments, we'll be right back to shape the tops of these, as well as treat the ends. And then after that, the back is done. Alright, so... As you can see, there's a lot going on here. So, please, it really means a lot to me with your subscriptions, liking and subscribing, you know, getting a little bit of merch. It really helps to pay for the production of this. And if you want $500 off of a guitar like this that could be built on this channel, go ahead and use the promo code YouTube on my website. Link for that's in the description. I'll see you next week where we're going to bend some sides.